Hello and welcome to The Briefing Room. I'm Bill Fralick from WTCM Radio News. It's our weekly roundup of some of the stories making headlines right here in northern Michigan with some of the journalists that are covering those stories. And this week we're joined by Vanessa Fays from 9 and 10 and Fox 32. Hello. Welcome back. Thanks. And Jeremy McBain from the Petoskey News Review. Hi. Good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for making the trip down. Let's start with let's start with talking about that. How are the roads out there? Uh, this Thursday morning. Well, you know, they're, they're, it's winter in northern Michigan. They're not that bad. Typical. I stayed on the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an improvement over sometimes. Yeah, right? you know, yeah, I didn't. I could see the road now, and I didn't have to use the little rumple strips to the side to tell me if I was <laughs> going in a safe right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, how are the potholes between Traverse City and Petoskey? Um, uh, well, they were covered in snow today, so they're not that bad. But they I've were been, filled with <laughs> snow. Yeah, right? but I've been down uh, through there before, and, and um, um, it's uh, kind of like kind of like driving down an unpaved country road uh, that is a washboard. <laughs> yes, that's pretty pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, and Vanessa, you've made the trip obviously through Traverse City is terrible enough. Mm-hmm. Eighth Street. Lots of potholes. Eighth Street's one of our favorites. Oh yeah, gotta love um, it. And then the other day, back and forth to Cadillac. Mm -hmm. How are the roads in in your <coughs> jurisdiction? They're all right, but the potholes are terrible. They're awful. They're huge. There's a real big one on Eighth Street somewhere, um, down towards town, more towards town. Huge. It's scary. It do is. You know, do you notice how when you see the, you see that big pothole, the very last the minute, the last minute, and in time just seems to slow down. You know, I'm going to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you can do <laughs> at this point. Is. You can just see <laughs> all the all the bills for your car come in. Yeah. Yes. Have you guys seen the? There's a picture going around Facebook and on the web of Michigan driving, and it it's like drunk driver. Oh, and yes. it's more straight than the <laughs> one of the potholes. Because you're dodging all the potholes. Yes. <laughs> uh, road funding, uh, an issue. Obviously, we've been watching that from the state. Back at uh, Christmas time, we got word of some hundred and some million dollars going to northern Michigan. And now we've got this other piece of legislation that's in Lansing. I think it's 219 million. Sending us uh, some more money. Um, yeah. 219. And then I think, what was it, 100 and some specifically for winter maintenance? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Basically, it was enough money to fill a couple potholes, right? And and make it you know make it seem like you're doing something. But a million bucks for every county. Gonna, and yeah, it's not going to do much. It's not going to do much at all. What's uh, Jeremy? What's your level of optimism outlook? What are you hearing from lawmakers? Um, just kind of long term. I mean, we're really kind of in an uphill battle. And I've I've got it, you know I hate to sound like a cynic here, but um, I'm going to. But you're going to. <laughs> um, I've got very little optimism. Uh, for this legislature to come up with um, a feasible road plan um, because coming up with a, a, a road plan for the state of Michigan is going to take some real leadership and is going to take somebody making some hard decisions when it comes to spending money because it's going to take a lot of money to bring our infrastructure uh, yeah. up, to, up to speed. I don't see that with this legislature. Um, and I, don't see, I, don't, I didn't see it with legislatures from, from a few years ago either. Every legislature seems to want to just kick the can down the road, put a little paltry amount of money into into the fund, and say they're doing something, they're doing something. and they're really not. So I think this is going to be an ongoing issue uh, for the state of Michigan, and um, I think we're getting to the point now, especially after this winter, with it being as harsh as it was, and we're going to see so much damage to the roads this spring. Um, I think it's going to have an impact in our, on, on our economy, especially in northern Michigan. Would you want to come to a state where just driving down the road is going to cost you thousands of dollars in damage to your vehicle? Only if I'm renting a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But I just, I just don't have a lot of faith in, in, in this legislature in coming, in coming with, up with a solution to this issue. The 219 is, is just, it's almost insulting that, right. that they think that this is a great deal. Well, we've got, what, a $900 million budget surplus, and uh, the mathematical suggestions on how we spend that money just seem so arbitrary. Yeah, I mean, they want to they give a tax break to people, which is going to basically equal out to, according to one of the plans I saw, about 45 bucks a year. Well, $45 a year in your pocket's not going to pay for their new tire that you're going to have to buy because the roads are so bad in the state of Michigan. You know, they, they need to come to grips. They need to make an investment. Uh, on the state of Michigan, and one of the big investments they're going to need to make is going to be road funding, and they just don't want to do that. Another big investment story that 
you've been working on, Vanessa. Financial story in Grand Traverse County, the yeah. Grand Traverse County budget. Uh, we had talked to us a month or two, two months ago with the county, and they were looking at a budget shortfall. Now they're looking at a budget surplus, mm -hmm. but we've also got this issue with the idea of needing a new jail, which yes. has not gone away in no, years. No, it's been something going on for 10 years, and it's they, they don't have enough room over there, and the Sheriff's Department has had to move out to their Woodmere location and combine with the city, which the Sheriff says is just really hard. Um, it would help with efficiency if they could get more um, more rooms and then a, a way to put the department in there because like he brings up a good point you lose contact with officers once they're in the jail and that's just not that's not something that they want so as efficiency wise cost wise right now they're having to send some inmates to other neighboring counties sometimes or releasing them early and they don't want to have to do that but they they don't have enough beds yeah, I mean, that's not a unique problem. Uh, lots no. of counties are mm -hmm. facing that. But um, in Grand Traverse County, you know, one of the problems is the number of female inmates. Mm -hmm. They don't have the separate right. space. Right. So, in, you know, you can have, uh, uh, on any given day, you might have one female in the separate cell. But mm -hmm. if you've got more than five or six, then you've got to take over a whole other yeah. wing of the jail. And that means somebody's got to move out. Right, right. So it just, but I mean, it, it's such a huge investment. So, but they did yesterday at the budget meeting, they've got the final draft. They are going to start setting aside money to build this new jail. The sheriff is just hoping that it's not going to take, you know, this needs to be done right. and it needs to get done quick. So. Is this creating any sort of uh, safety problems other than losing contact with the officers? Not as of, not as of now, no. Um, that they, they just mentioned that efficiency-wise it's a problem, room-wise it's a problem, and it's it's $35 a day, I believe, to house an inmate elsewhere. So that's, it's cost it's not cost-effective either to have it the way that they have it, so. Well, I remember, um, I mean, this like you said, this conversation goes back 10 years. Uh, when Leelanau County built their jail, there was this conversation about whether we needed a regional facility. Yes, they touched on that. And we're having that again now, too. Yeah. I know Grand Traverse County really doesn't want to discuss that right now just because that would be very costly to do something like that because no matter where you put it, you're going to have somebody's going to have to transport and that's a lot of money. Yeah. So right now it seems like Grand Traverse County is just kind of like let's focus on just our county jail and be done with it. Um, they had briefly mentioned it at the meeting yesterday, but it didn't sound like it had any legs. There's a couple of different ideas about that too, whether or not they would expand on the current site, they could build up and add extra levels, extra floors. Yeah, or yesterday move. they talked about completely moving because the way that, that the current jail is designed, there's just really no way to expand it um, in a way that they that would be most, you know, efficient for them. So now they're talking about completely moving it and making it bigger. Um, enough room for jail, enough room for all their administration, enough room for their deputies to be over there. They just don't know where to put it yet. Yeah. So well, they have the old health department building mm -hmm. off Lafreniere, which I've heard is an option. The other concern I've heard, too, is that um, obviously the current jail is right next to the courthouse. Yep. The logistics are just so natural where it is. Mm -hmm. And I guess the other question I want to I ask at some point is, you know, 10 years ago when, when they moved into this joint building with the city, it was a great idea. It was mm -hmm. consolidation of yep. services, trying to make things easier. So it's interesting that now it's yeah, this it's, is a problem. Yeah, and I'm wondering if it's just something that over the years they've been like, you know, this really isn't working well, that we thought well. It would be. Right, yeah. So I don't yeah. know if it's something to do with that or, or what. But yeah, now they're like, we just need to get into a building. It would be nice to have us all under one roof. So, so what's next? How far along do you well, think they really are at this point? When I talked to the commission chairman last night, he had mentioned that it could be about five years just because there's so much that they have to do. Um, I know the sheriff is hoping it's not five years. Um, they're going to start putting away money now. Um, there's a lot of, they don't want to have a shortfall again though, like this was not fun for them. So um, they're going to start putting away money now, but then it's the architecture, where's it going to go? bidding people out to do it, All that good it's, stuff. There's, it's gonna take a while. The other thing that kills me too though is if they move a, to a whole new location, um, then you've got this building right next to the courthouse that is a jail and you can't what do you do with use it? it for much else. Right. Bed and breakfast? <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> That's a good idea. I like the way you think. That's a nice idea. It'd be an interesting bed and breakfast. Um, well, I, and I was just literally sitting here as you were talking, thinking, well, they could keep you know the women there and the men in a new mm -hmm. place, or the men there and move the women into a smaller, separate facility or something. But surely there's a dozen other ideas that are kind of yeah, the works I'm out sure there, there too. is. I'm not. I'm not. They never actually did touch on that. Really, I think mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those things they'll talk about once they actually break ground and start getting plans moving. Sounds about right. Whenever. Once we break ground, we'll start figuring yeah. out the when plan. I, whenever that is. <laughs> um, do you know offhand uh, how your jail population is? Are you guys having any problems up in Charlevoix or Emmett counties that you hear of? Um, well, they built it. Um, oh, God, I had to be, had to be 10 years ago they built a new jail in, in Charlevoix. Um, I think that's, that's doing right. well. Um, I, I'm just, I'm not familiar as, as well with this with no, this true, topic. True, yeah, yeah, true I'm sorry. I'm just curious. Um, I, I'm trying to remember. I, I, I almost seem to remember that there w is an issue in, in Emmett County that I vaguely remember of it being um, getting full. Crowding issues. Uh, I don't know if there's it's, it's exactly crowding issues quite yet, but hard to say. If we ask <laughs> enough questions, somebody yeah. always has an issue with <laughs> yeah. something. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know the Attorney General has an issue with uh, some things going on up in your neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's uh, talk about the fracking problem, uh, I guess, first off. Well, yeah, there was um, the Attorney General um, uh, filed charges against uh, Encana and Chesapeake, two um, oil and gas companies, which are going around uh, northern Michigan, um, State of Michigan, really, um, and they were they were uh, uh, bidding on these uh, tracts of land during the state state auction. State auction. Yep. And and according to the attorney general, there was some collusion that was going on between these two companies. we basically uh, we'll bid on these ones, and, and and you bid on these ones, and we won't we won't uh, compete with each other, and you know keep the prices low or or, or higher. I don't know if it works out. Anyhow. Seems uh, like common <laughs> business sense to me. Uh, why is that a problem? <laughs> well, you can't really collude with another yeah. business. Yeah. Um, it creates all sorts of problems, um, legally and ethically. Uh, so the uh, attorney general filed charges against them, um, and they were arraigned uh, yesterday in Sheboygan, a Sheboygan District Court. Um, I believe that both companies got a $20,000 bond. Um, so this is going to be an interesting issue. Uh, we've got a story going in today's paper uh, Thursday um, uh, about about the Chesapeake and Kana um, um, charges, and uh, we'll be following it quite a bit because um, it'll be very because I know there's a, there's a lot of people that that uh, were quite upset in the whole the whole process because they were made promises by some oil and gas companies. I'm not going to say if it was these ones or not. Um, that never materialized. And I know some people, you know, they counted on this money, lost, they lost money, they lost their homes. Um, so it's a big issue around. I was uh, going to say, it's a, it's a big deal, it's a big story, and it goes pretty much all over northern Michigan. It's yes. From, they've got, you know, Kalkaska, I know, mm -hmm. was seemingly a hot spot. Do you have them all the way through Charlevoix, Emmett, Sheboygan, or are there targeted areas up in, in the tip of the mint? It's really targeted areas, um, mostly on, uh, in Charlevoix County, I would say on the uh, eastern side of the county, um, uh, southeastern side of the county. There, was a, there were a couple in Emmett County, um, on the eastern part of Emmett County, uh, some in Sheboygan. Um, yeah, it's there. There, there, there are a lot of sites. Really, actually, I should say a couple. There are a lot of sites throughout that area. Not as many as there are in Kalkaska and 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 uh, Gaylord and Grayling, um, but it's still an issue. That's um, it's one of those good stories, I guess, in a way for us, in that it, it affects a lot of people. It has a pro a broad interest. Um, obviously, not a lot of people directly affected necessarily by it, but mm -hmm. again, from Kalkaska mm -hmm. to the bridge. Everybody has something in near them that related to fracking that they well, can relate to. Well, it really it impacts. It, it, even if, if you think it doesn't impact you, it impacts your neighbor. It really impacts you because when you have companies, if it is true that they're colluding against each other, that impacts all of us. It impacts your economy. Um, that impacts the way people are doing business. Um, it, it, there's, there's a ripple effect. Do you know what the 
potential penalty uh, is? I mean, is there some kind of fine that the attorney general is ultimately after? Or oh, yeah. Trying there's, to shut them down? Or? Yeah, there's fines and there's jail time. Um, I, 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 I can't remember right offhand exactly how much it is. Uh, but there, there, there was some good jail time involved with this uh, and, and uh, a good amount of fines. Um, thousands of dollars in fines would be. But we know they can't come to Grand Traverse County because there's no room in the jail. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Won't yeah. have anywhere to go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep them clear. All right. I want to talk more about the Attorney General when, we'll, when we come back. We'll take a quick break here on the briefing room, uh, and we'll be right back right after this. Continuing financial support for Up North TV comes from East Bay Charter Township, the City of Traverse City, Elmwood Charter Township, and the Charter Township of Garfield. Their support makes it possible for our communities to create and enjoy local programming. Help bring awareness, promote your cause, or share your craft. Get started at upnorthmedia.org. Welcome back to The Briefing Room. I'm Bill Fralick from WTCM Radio News. We're talking about some of the stories making headlines here in northern Michigan. And with, with me again this week, Vanessa Faze from 9 and 10 and Fox 32 News and Jeremy McBain from the Petoskey News Review. Thanks again, guys, for coming in. Right before the break, we were talking about the Attorney General filing a suit against uh, some of the fracking companies up in mm -hmm. northern Michigan. But the AG's office has been busy in other ways. You had a story breaking on uh, Wednesday night about yes. propane. Yeah, um, he filed a, a, a subpoena against uh, Feral Gas, which is a pretty large su supplier of propane um, throughout the state of Michigan. Uh, and they have a few, few locations in, in northern Michigan as well. Um, and this has to do with an, investi an ongoing investigation the Attorney General is doing on um, price gouging, and gas prices, and, and, and propane uh, company practices. Um, and according to the uh, uh, release that I received last night on it, um, there were some reports from downstate of, of propane prices at, at uh, $8 a gallon. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas in the state of Michigan, it was, you know, the average price was going for like three something, um, which is high because of the propane shortages that we're seeing in the state of Michigan. But $8 was just, you know, I believe that got uh, Shooty's attention. attention. As it, um, as it should, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, he filed the subpoena yesterday in Saginaw, um, and we'll see what comes of that. I would love to see a uh, price gouging investigation into the gas stations, just because it always <laughs> seems like we are talking about it, and it doesn't feel like we ever really get a clear answer from we've done anybody. We've done for probably, oh gosh, I've been in Northern Michigan for 15 years now. Um, we've, we've done several different investigations on, on gas stations and how they pick, pick their prices. And uh, we really can't get a solid answer mm -hmm. on it. You know, all, all we hear is, you know, it's, it's uh, consumer demand, uh, the time of the season, excuse, excuse, excuse. We never really gotten a solid answer on that. So the, the, uh, the best thing that we've done at the News Review is we started about I want to say four years ago, uh, we put on the front page of our newspaper what the gasoline prices are around the area. Uh, and from what we he we've heard, that this has uh, uh, become popular with, uh, with some readers and, mm -hmm. and unpopular with some gas stations. Uh, but, you know, we really, you know, insert excuse here. Why gas prices have gone up? Why have they gone up recently? Um, you know, unrest in the Middle East. Uh, uh, consumer demand, I don't know, insert your right. excuse. Pipeline uh, problem in Pipeline, yeah. Wisconsin or whatever. Yeah, it bugs me when they go up, you know, 35 cents in one afternoon. Well, and you know it's the same gas they had in the tank in this morning. Yeah, well, it's, and, and it's, you go from, from Charlevoix and Petoskey to Traverse City, and you see a 20 cent pri price difference. You know, it's, it's up, you know, it's 380 something up, up in Petoskey and Charlevoix. Mm -hmm. I know this morning, you know, Thursday, it was, what, 365, 360? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Why? So you come here to get get gas and go back home? Uh, I do. Every time I come down here, I fill up my gas tank. Oh, there you go. Good thinking. <laughs> uh, Vanessa, let's turn back to you. You had a pretty, uh, I guess, impressive story visually um, this week in uh, Central Lake in Antrim County. Yeah. Um, well, the problem was we really couldn't go on the property 
because the homeowners, this was a seasonal home in Central Lake, and at three in the morning Tuesday, it just exploded. Like craziest, definitely crazy, it, completely level. Like there was one beam still standing. It was, in, it was insane. I, I don't know what happened. Luckily, no one was home, but there was a home pretty close to it that was a little bit affected. There was a two by four that went through the siding of this other home. Huh? Um, and a lot of debris, but it was just gone. The, and the, but the back deck was still up. Was that was the only thing still standing? It was. I don't even know how that could have happened. But they, um, a lot of neighbors in the area, told me that it was the loudest thing they've ever heard. And then it went into flames, and whatever was still standing burnt down, and it's just gone completely. So um, the homeowners, I guess, are seasonal, but they do they come up on the weekend sometimes in the winter. So it's just, I can only imagine that's, oh, everything yeah. in there, gone. So t tell me, I guess, you know, at three in the morning when you guys <clears throat> got word of it, what that meant for you and what you saw when you pulled up that first. Well, when we first, we went out there in the afternoon um, and when we pulled up, everybody was cleared out. Um, but I just remember it, looking at it, I couldn't believe it. We couldn't see even where it was because of the way it's a private drive. And the homes, there's some sit up kind of far and then others sit back. And this was one of the ones that sat back. And it, we had driven down the street actually a couple times and my photographer was like, I don't see anything. And when we had turned one particular way, I happened to see through the trees that that's it. It's completely, it's gone. That's why you don't see anything. Yeah, exactly. yeah. it's completely gone. You know, I've, se I've been to a couple like home explosion type things and it's never, I've never seen one that, com it was leveled, like flat. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Do they have a cause? They don't have a cause yet. They're investigating it, so it was it was crazy. I can't imagine that happening to my house. No. Uh, tell me uh, another part of your week, and I don't know if this was the same day or a different day, but I day, saw day before day before your your post on Facebook and just kind of the newsroom life News problems. Life. It well <laughs> got a little challenge. We're an hour from five o'clock when we were supposed to be live out of the newsroom in Traverse City. And I was actually going to fix a script and all of a sudden my system stopped working. So I thought it was my computer, maybe I'll shut it off. And then my photographer that day, Jeremy, called me on my desk phone and couldn't get through. <laughs> so my phone wasn't working because he calls from the bay. So I walked back there and he's like shutting the, he's like, I don't know, my system, Abbott just crashed. I don't know what, and I was like, oh boy. I'm like, my system's not working either, so we know we have a problem. And all the rumblings of even the sales team in our office was, is your guys' email working? Is anything working? Phones were out, email was out, internet was out. Well, turns out Dish and Charter both had uh, an issue with a fiber line. Everything went out completely, and in our Petoskey Bureau as well, actually. So for us, because we're kind of close to Cadillac, in kind theory. Of. We- <laughs> Kind of not really Not at really all, at all. But, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. At 5.05, just to get something on the air, because we waited, we waited for about an hour, and then we're told, okay, clearly you're not gonna make it for the six. This isn't coming back anytime soon. Head down here. <laughs> so, in the hopes that we would make it, I had to drive. Jeremy was editing off of our live truck laptop in the car. And we were, we missed it. We missed the six. So missed the six. We got down there at like 6.15, a little before. And uh, then it was trying to figure out, no one had ever edited off of the live truck laptop and then gotten it onto the system. So we had to figure out how to do that. That took time. And then it just ended up being easier to just edit it and throw it in a later show. It was yeah. the definition of a news reporter's life that day. It, it was it was madness. It's a, a great picture you have on Facebook too of Jeremy just sitting in the passenger seat with the big laptop like up to his ear trying the, to hear the audio. The stripping on that car is a little messed up and so on the passenger side it's pretty loud. So he was he, he had been joking as I'm driving he's joking you know of course we take the loudest car that we have up here and so and you know it's a Mac it's not that loud so he's lifting it up trying to hear it and I couldn't I was just dying laughing it was so funny. It was, it was a mess. It was a mess. All right, Jeremy, final word. Biggest uh, problem in the Petoskey newsroom with technology? <laughs> Any good stories for us, or is everything perfect in the Petoskey offices well, in the news review? Let's see. We've installed a new editorial software. There's a software that we use to write all of our stories. 
um, just about the same time we installed a new program for our website. So, so no, it's nothing, all moving, it's just moving completely smoothly. So nothing can go wrong then with new software. Absolutely <laughs> nothing going wrong. Um, yeah, I, actually, I, I just got a phone call a couple weeks ago from our sports reporters because the entire system went down at about Gow. 10 o'clock at night and they couldn't upload <laughs> anything to the web. and. Talk about anxiety. It Oh, that was terrible. I started, I was like, at 4 o'clock, it was kind of like, okay, this happens. So I thought, no, we'll be fine in a half hour. But when you get the call to drive an hour south to Cadillac. I started sweating. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Try to make it for the 6 if you can. I'm like, it's 5.05. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. We could have told them that before you left, I bet. Yeah. Um, no, that's funny. We had a, a change, an upgrade in our same editing software that we use at the radio station, too. And I'd never really had a problem with it in the past three years, but we upgraded and now it crashes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it just happens to go that way. Yeah, got a lot of yeah. technology. Yeah, yeah, it makes it better. <laughs> well, the technology companies and software yeah. providers, I'm sure it does. Yep. All right, well, thanks for tuning into the briefing room this week. I appreciate everyone uh, joining us for the show. And Jeremy McBain from the Potosky Pleasure. News Review, thanks for coming in. And Vanessa Faze, thank you for being with us as well. Yeah, great to see you again. Uh, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time right here on The Briefing Room.